Today we're going to go over a medical director's guide to research 2.0. So I always get the question from medical directors, what are my responsibilities? National Registry requires that you are verifying skilled competency for AEMT and paramedic levels. If you have a training officer in your agency and there's only one and there's no other person that can verify a training officer's education, you are more than welcome to set up a training officer account, affiliate with the agency. That training officer, a existing training officer will approve you and then you will have access as a training officer to verify education. You'll also be verifying skills on inactive to active forms. So the differences between Research 1.0 and 2.0 are Research 1.0 was a linear process. The provider submitted an application, the training officer approved the education or the education skills for the VLS, and then the medical director would approve the skills for ALS. In Research 2.0, the components are separate. So everyone validates, approves, or submits whatever they need to do, and then all three pieces come to the registry. You're no longer waiting for an application to come from the provider and from the training officer to you as the medical director. Anytime you feel a person's skills are competent, you can approve their skill. If you'd still like the provider to submit the application and the training officer to sign off first, that is your prerogative. You are more than welcome to request that, that those happen before you sign off on skill. So a little bit about your dashboard. It's a very handy space. There's a lot of information. You can filter by agencies if you have more than one agency. You can edit your medical director affiliations. Pending actions and requests help you to verify skills and verify skills for inactive to active. You can get a temperature or a feel for your agency's activity as far as recertification, what's coming up, what's been done, how many percentages, and you can see an agency roster. And that's just the first half. So we're going to break that down a little bit, help you with this. Medical director dashboard, select an agency. This is the two screens you'll see when you click on the arrow. You'll see a list of all the agencies that you actually have an affiliation with. Next to that, to the right, is your managed affiliations. This is where you can go and see who you're affiliated with, the status of your affiliations, and even request to affiliate with more agencies. You can remove your affiliation from that same screen if you click on the agency, and then you'll see agency information and the remove button that you can actually remove yourself if you're no longer affiliated with that agency as a training officer. Below the agency, list of agencies, you'll see a pending actions and requests. This is where you're going to get uh, used to verify skills or verify the skills on an inactive to active request. So you're going to ensure you have the proper agency selected and then select which action you want to approve. Once you click that, you'll see the skills verification screen. You can approve or deny and then submit. If you click the box in the blue banner at the top next to approve or deny, those are going to approve or deny everyone in the list. Inactive to active requests are now electronic, as I said before. So if one of your personnel goes inactive, because they didn't have someone finding their skills or, or whatever reason they chose to go inactive. They can submit an inactive to active form that you can sign off on the skills electronically by the click of a button. No more having to track you down, you to go see them or vice versa, find something and then mail or fax it in. It's all done electronically now. This is the section that I said you can get the temperature of your agency. Here you can see there are uh, several providers due to recertify this season, some that have already recertified, some that lapsed prior. The roster section gives you access to the names, registry numbers. If you click on a provider's arrow to the left of their name, 
team, you'll get a drop down box that will give you their contact information and you'll be able to view their education record. That's their transcript. This is all the education that they've ever listed with National Registry electronically. Here's an overview of an electronic educational record. Some of the questions we get are, what does partially assigned mean? Partially assigned means just that it's uh, a four and a half hour course. Maybe some of the hours from that course have been assigned to various hours and topics needed to recertify in the managed education section of a provider and some of the hours haven't. Same goes for fully assigned, meaning all assigned, and then unassigned, those hours are left unassigned. Meaning they haven't been assigned to anything for whatever reason. Maybe they're not needed, maybe they're outdated, and they're outside of this research cycle and you can't assign them now. The bottom half of your dashboard has a lot of useful information. Access to your agency list, all the agencies you're affiliated with as the medical director will show up there. You have a message center. Those are important information and messages from National Registry, a news box, a YouTube link page, a link to the agency guide if you'd ever like to read over that, and, and then of course the button for email us that comes directly to EdMed here at the National Registry. The bottom of every page, every screen on the registry's website there's a blue ribbon with helpful links for you as a medical director. This is where you get to the resources from that ribbon. And this is a very helpful page for medical directors. It gives you some resources, gives you some links you can click on to get answers to your most popular questions like uh, how to create a medical director account, how to add a medical director role to an existing account. So attesting to skills competency for advanced level providers. Back to the main dashboard, you're going to click on View next to Skills Verification after you've verified you're in the proper or the agency you want to be in. You will get this screen to, to verify skills where you will either approve or deny and then submit. And that concludes our overview for the day. If you have any questions, please email ednet, E-D-N-E-T, at nremt.org, or if you have general recertification questions or know somebody that has general recertification questions, email recertification. Thank you and have a great day.